My life as a young artist was spent under a dictatorship. We had a strong man, usurping power and pretending to be a military general, in uniform and all. <laughs> Command performances facilitating North Korean-style mass games was a rite of passage for those artists wishing patronage from the government. If you wished as an artist to be celebrated, your work had to show you were sedated. But this didn't happen all at once. It creeped up surreptitiously, empowered by people fearing ethnic domination and by attitudes made tolerant by expedience. By the time it was full-blown, and I mean in the explosive sense that causes death, it was clear that it was a blunder datorship. They could not lie plausibly, even about the most horrific crime they had committed. But even though they managed to keep it under wraps for 40 years and counting, everybody knew. Worldwide. Implausible lying is apparently the mark of this kind of beast. Ours got the name King Kong. He only had two Ks. The one who has the three Ks is the one in whom we have seen the implausible lying repeatedly, even as he clings to the pinnacle of power in the nation of exceptionalism. The people, though, in their diversity, unite, risking infection with a deadly virus to mount the just revolutionary cause of Black Lives Matter and to protest the policies by this blunderingly dangerous president. In our case, at the periphery, where always the effects are more severe, a situation developed, one that is perhaps the most accurate measure of the confidence of a people, in their government, more of the citizenry resided outside of the country than inside. Thousands of young people were given scholarships to study abroad. Not me. I paid my way and returned. They absconded, never returned. Not only them, though. Even cockroaches flee their homes, is a line of poetry Martin Carter wrote. The home for the indigent fell in on itself from neglect. Concerns seem to have turned inward. The party of self-servers assumed paramountcy over even the state. People scrunched by whilst the siren blaring entourage of the powerful whizzed by. The roads were still smooth then, but the reneging of responsibility to the people is what the remaining citizens fought against. The abdication. The abdication of responsibility. Sounds familiar? The playbook of wannabe dictators does not change much. We from the so-called shithole countries know the drill. Turning the illegal legal, criminalizing dissent, and normalizing perversity, we've seen it all. Politicians are driven by expedience. They don't engage with groundational consciousness. In Guyana, they banished Vicky in the 1970s to the back of the promenade gardens. A generation later, she was restored to a place of prominence outside the high court. It was all just symbolism. Lesson there for the mighty from the periphery, where the agents of old exploitations are very much in charge up until now. So, it's time we put our foot down. Time for a heartical change to the social, political and environmental order. People the world over knew what the great American guitarist Jimi Hendrix knew. If something had to be changed, it couldn't be done without music. And you're done now. Tosh and Marley have had a greater impact raising people's consciousness than any politician anywhere.